Good morning, church. It's a good day, amen? You're in the right place, amen? Just in case you don't know, you're at FCC this morning. I don't know if you've just started wandering around, but you're in the right place this morning. Let's stand together and, uh, and let's worship this morning. Holy Father, our Creator, Redeemer, and Savior, glorious is your name. We worship you this morning and open our lives to you so that we may know your blessings, your majesty. Give us your kingdom vision and rule in us through your grace that we may love you with our whole heart, desire you with our whole soul, so that we may love you, our neighbors, with your love. We thank you most of all for Jesus, who is truly our daily bread. We praise you for your indescribable mercy. We praise you for your faithfulness. We praise you for the gift of your spirit. Thank you, Father, for being a God who is with us, for being a God who empowers us, empowers our visions, and sees who we are and who we can become. We give you all the glory, praise, and honor. We pray this in the name of Jesus. And all the church said... On the day that death surrendered to the mighty cross of Jesus Christ, the earth would shake beneath the weight of dark and sky. His brow, a crown of sorrow for a king whose weakness was our strength. No word he spoke, his love was shown for all to see.
on the day he comes in glory to reveal the fullness of his reign all hearts will bow before the sound of jesus Thanks, y'all. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Amy. I'm one of the pastors here at First Christian. And we uh, anticipated a smaller crowd today because a lot of our young families are at family camp in Athens. Pastor Justin and his family are there. Pastor Austin got up early this morning with his family and drove to be here. He gets extra points today. Um, but we, we encourage Justin. I don't want to make it sound like he, he chose not to be here. We no, encourage him. If he really wanted him. to be here, he would have been here, church. <laughs> oh, and Heath, too. Yes. And Heath, too. Yes. The Ramses. Uh, but we encourage Justin to relax um, and enjoy that time. But uh, congratulations on making it on a holiday, one of our, our lower attended Sundays. That's, um, that in and of itself says so much about the power of love, our willingness to gather and show up for each other, for love. Let us take a moment on this Memorial Day weekend uh, to honor those who have lost their lives in service, to invite the Spirit of God not just into this place, but into our very bodies as the light of Christ enters. Over all the earth, you reign on high. Every mountain stream, every sunset sky. But my one request, Lord, my only aim is that you reign in me. Let's stand together. Let's continue to praise. Over every thought, over every word, make my life reflect the beauty of my Lord. Because you mean more to me than any earthly thing. So won't you reign in me again? darkest hour you are the lord of all i am so won't you reign in me again lord reign in me reign in your power over all my dreams 
darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? Won't you reign in me again? Won't you reign in me again? That reminds you of camp? On Easter, we uh, introduced this song to this church as a new song. It's called Gyra. We've sung it consistently every three weeks since because it's such a great song. And it's a great message because our Gyra, our Jehovah Gyra, which means God provides, is a great message. And maybe a message for our time. I know it's a message for all time. But it's a message for our time. And whether you're here in this place this morning or you gathered, uh, gathered with us online, we all come needing something. And this song reminds us that our God provides all that we need. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up. So there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out you would cross an ocean so i wouldn't drown you've never been closer than you are right now because you are a gyra you are in us sing that with us church because you are a gyra you are enough, and I will be content in every circumstance. You are a gyro, you are enough, forever enough, always enough, more than enough, forever enough, always enough, more than enough. forget how I feel right now on the mountaintop. I can see so clear what it's all about. Stay by my side when the sun goes down. Don't want to forget how I feel right now. Cause you are a gyro. More than enough, forever enough, always enough, more than enough. I'm already loved, I'm already chosen, I know who I am, I know what you've spoken, I'm already loved. More than I could imagine, and that is enough. I'm already loved, I'm already chosen. I know who I am, I know what you've spoken. I'm already loved. 
more than I could imagine and that is enough I'm already loved I'm already chosen I know who I am I know what you've spoken I'm already loved more than and that is enough Cause you are Jaira You are enough Sing with us church You are Jaira You are enough And I will in every circumstance, you are Jaira, you are enough, cause you are Jaira, you are enough, you are Jaira, you are enough, and I will be content in every Circumstance, you are Jaira, you are enough. You are Jaira, you are enough. You are Jaira, you are enough. And I will be content in every circumstance. Jaira, you are enough, cause you are Jaira, you are enough, you are Jaira, you are enough, and I will be content in every circumstance, you are Jaira. church says. Amen. Be seated. Pastor Amy. Yeah, that was beautiful. So friends, we are finishing up our several week series on celebration. We have been talking these last few weeks about the ways that God calls us to celebrate our lives. How God watches over and blesses and in and transforms us. This week, we are talking about how God calls us to remember love and to allow love to remember, that is, put us back together. It's fitting, given that it is Memorial Day weekend. I always get the dates of Memorial Day weekend and Labor Day weekend mixed up. I can never remember which, which one's at the beginning and which one's at the end of summer. But now I get to wear white shoes. I know that. Memorial Day, yes, okay. So I, I actually did a little history. I looked up how we came up with this tradition of Memorial Day. It turns out that Representative John A. Logan who was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1858 in Illinois and later served as a commander in the Union Army, believed that Memorial Day should occur at the time of year when flowers are in bloom across the whole country, according to the National Museum of the U.S. Army. He thought this would be a way to bring healing to a deeply wounded and divided nation after the Civil War. He said this day would be designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and churchyard in the land. That we would, as the saying goes, never forget their sacrifice. 
So we will be honoring our veterans at noon today with a sing-along and hot dogs with Pastor Deshay in the gathering area. And most of us will continue this weekend celebrating with friends and family around a barbecue pit or a pool. But we are still a deeply divided nation in need of healing. It would be easier to focus on the lighter side of this holiday, the hot dogs and the, the singing, which is a good, it's good. But given the tragedy of this week, the shootings in Uvalde on Tuesday, in which 19 elementary school children and two teachers were murdered, we're all once again forced to reckon with the realities of both gun violence and mental illness in our country. Notice, I didn't say gun violence or mental illness. Both can be true. This is not an either or scenario. It's both and. Gun violence and mental illness in our country must be addressed. As people of faith, we can no longer ignore, ignore these things. I would probably also add to that list addiction and hate. So both and is a central theme. This is an equal opportunity sermon today. Everyone is going to experience, including me, y'all, including me, I'm in this with you, both discomfort and comfort because that is our story. Jesus came for sinners and saints. Rain falls on the just and the unjust, both and. It's okay to have mixed feelings. It's okay to want to celebrate and grieve. What I ask is that we all try to stay open and hold space for God's love to heal us. Maybe notice when we are tempted to try and close off. I believe that those spaces, those holy spaces, are exactly where God is asking us to consider new life. So on Friday night, as I watched my son Matthias cross the stage to receive his high school diploma, my heart ached thinking about those families in Uvalde who would never get the chance to do the same with their children. And it swelled with pride for this boy who had sometimes wondered if would make, he'd make it past maybe fifth grade. Oh, he got straight A's. Wow. Yeah. Both grief and anger and joy and pride, all of it for these kids who have had their future stolen, these young people with their whole lives ahead of them, all of this is true. When we remember love, anytime we hold love up, our sorrow and our joy are forever intertwined in both our hearts and our minds. Henry Nouwen, one of the great theologians and writers of the 20th century, says, there is a quality of sadness that pervades all the moments of our life, it seems that there is no such thing as clear-cut, pure joy, but that even in the most happy moments of our existence, we sense a tinge of sadness. In every satisfaction, there is the fear of jealousy. Behind every smile, there is a tear. In every embrace, there is loneliness, and in every friendship, distance. It's as though they become one another. Joy and sadness are as close to each other as the splendid colors of fall and the soberness of the barren trees. When you touch the hand of a returning friend, you already know that he will have to leave you again. When you are moved by the quiet vastness of a sun-covered ocean, you miss the friend who cannot see the same. Joy and sadness are born at the same time. 
both arising from such deep places in your heart that you can't find words to capture your complex emotions. But this intimate experience in which every bit of life is touched by a bit of death can point us beyond the limits of our existence. It can do so by making us look forward in expectation to the day when our hearts will be filled with perfect joy, a joy that no one can take away from us. This is our hope as followers of Christ. Never forget, we say, as if we could, as if we would want to, or that it would even be possible. When evil in the world rains down with bloodshed upon the most vulnerable, on school children in their classrooms and old women in grocery stores in Buffalo, there is a part of us that wants to forget. But to deny suffering only recycles it, only prolongs it. To suppress the realities of our obsession with violence will only stoke more hatred and more fear, more suffering. When the forces of the world seek to divide us, God seeks to remember us. We are tempted to turn away from those who suffer. And love calls us to remember them. When we are divided, we are weak. Sometimes we tell ourselves that our strength is in our independence, that we ought to be self-made, but our real strength is in our unity. Our real hope is in Christ. So can faithful followers of Jesus mourn and celebrate at the same time? Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep, says Paul in Romans 12. Perhaps we just allow it rather than pushing it away and allow them to shape us into a future of love. Perhaps they are even mutually dependent upon each other or inextricably linked like a mother and child. In Isaiah 49, the prophet asks, Can a woman forget her nursing child? or show no compassion for the child of her womb. Even these might forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. The word of God for the people of God, and together we say, thanks be to God. Never forget. Never forget that God will never forget us. That's the promise. Okay, a little levity. We can have some church fun here. This is not our church. This is another church. When I was in seminary, Christian and I led a youth group together, and it started out as a pretty small group of just a few kids, but once the word got out that we had free pizza and a gym, it grew quickly. Soon we had nearly 100 kids coming a week. I'm not kidding, that gym was packed. These kids were from all over the neighborhood, all ages, all backgrounds, all races. It was beautiful, and it was holy chaos. For our first Youth Sunday, the kids planned an entire worship service. They did everything. They did the music, they did the prayers, they did the communion. And the people in that little church who hadn't had any kids for years in their pews loved it. Until they found out that earlier that week when we were practicing in the sanctuary, the communion trays had uh, found their way across to the other side in the air like a frisbee. I got called into the office. Amy, we have a problem. I know, I know, I am so sorry about those trays. They do kind of look like Frisbees. 
These are kids who have never been in church before. They are still learning how to be here, especially in the sanctuary. But I set them down, and we had a little stern talk about what it means to show respect in a holy space, what sacred space is about, and how to take care of this beautiful place that God has given us. Well, it's not just that, said the pastor. They bring their skateboards in. Our insurance doesn't cover skateboards. Okay, okay, no skateboards, I'll tell them. And there are scuff marks all over the walls down the hall. And one of the stalls in the men's bathroom has some writing on it. Okay, I'll make sure they clean all of it up. We can paint that hall. And last week, a window got broken in one of the classrooms. I knew what was coming. I did not want to hear it. Amy, this is just not going to work out. Those kids just need more help and supervision than we can handle. Maybe there's another church nearby that can host them. But there wasn't. Not nearby. Most of those kids lived across the street uh, in this apartment complex, and they came because it was close enough to home that they could walk. So we tried to set up carpools to another location, but many of those kids' parents didn't feel okay about their kids driving around in strangers' cars, and I didn't blame them for that. But without that weekly contact, we started to lose touch. And the group, though much smaller, moved over to another church in another neighborhood on the other side of town. A few months passed, and I got a call from the associate pastor of the church where we had had the Holy Chaos Youth Group. Amy, you have got to come see our new ministry. I am so excited about this. Can you make it over this afternoon? I was optimistic. Maybe they figured out a way to bring the kids back, I thought. I walked into that office, and I will never forget this, the whole staff was huddled around this little glass case. It looked like a, a Lego model. Um, and this, it was sitting on the table in the middle of the office, and as I got closer, I saw that it looked like kind of a miniature castle, sort of a, a brick fortress with a wrought iron fence all the way around it. A new playground, I wondered. Is that fence to keep people out or in, I joked. Isn't it wonderful, they said. Sure, what is it? Well, this isn't actually the main attraction. This is just the space that we need to build to hold it. Hold what? They pointed then to a picture hanging on the wall above the little miniature castle, and it was familiar kind of, but strangely different. It was the Last Supper, but not Da Vinci's version. It looked bigger, shinier, maybe, and more modern. This, said the pastor, is the largest wax rendering of the Last Supper in the world. Wax, they were wax statues, and they were so excited. I didn't get it. To me, these statues in the picture looked like nothing more than oversized candles. Something you'd see, you know, maybe at the Hallmark store or the bargain bin. Now, he said, all we have to do is raise a million dollars for the building and we will be able to bring in that exhibit and have it here permanently. And then, of course, we'll have to consider the costs of cooling a building that size. Now think about this, that would be very important because if that building wasn't properly cooled, what happens to wax? <laughs> nobody wants to be responsible for melting Jesus and his disciples. Oh, nobody, nobody would ever want to do anything to hurt Jesus. In fear, we might be tempted to try and contain this precious gift of love. We might want to fence it in, build up a fortress around it. We might not even want to risk that. Maybe instead of the real thing, we'll just set up a replica. 
A replica of love? Hmm. How does that work? Yes, it is much safer to keep it contained. And it is so easy for me to stand here and tell you a story about some other church in some other place. But we all do it. We give our time, our energy, our money, and our devotion to things that cannot satisfy. We want to stay safely locked away behind our own wrought iron fences because once you unlock those gates, anyone can come in. Anyone? That's what we say. It sounds good. And it sounds terrifying. Both can be true. Good and terrifying. Perhaps we need some realignment. That is the root of the word religion in Latin. Religio, as in the uh, ligaments in our body. God's love realigns us. Listen to me, says God. I will never forget you. Never forget that. I remember you, and I remember you. I put you back together with love. I know who you are. Let me remind you of your true self in Christ. Yes, Life is hard. Life is messy and sometimes violent and terrifying. Yes, things will get broken, including our hearts. They are not exempt. But don't suppress it. Don't try to lock it away. We'll find a way to put it back together. We'll do it together with God's help. We are not called to understand life, but to participate in it fully, to celebrate it in all of its seasons. When our hearts break open, whether it's because they're bursting with pride or spilling over with grief, we can trust God to remember us. I found a prayer this week that helped me to remember my spirit, and I'd like to share it with you. I don't know who wrote it. I like to give credit, but no name was attached. But whoever this person is understands what it is to live with a broken heart. Will you pray with me? Dear God, I'm sad to inform you that the planet is on fire and the world is messed up. There is illness and suffering and so, so much violence. It's all a bit much right now. I don't want to feel numb, but sometimes I do. Except for when I'm having a level nine response to a level two situation. I mean, it's humbling to admit yesterday that I shouted at the guy with the painfully and unnecessarily loud muscle car in front of my apartment. Bless that guy, Lord. Please just show me what is mine to do, because otherwise, I will feel horrible not doing everything, or callous for just doing nothing. So give me grace for myself and others. Also, everyone is still woefully understaffed, so grant me patience with every clerk and delivery driver and customer service rep, and when I can All I can do is stop during the day and place my hand on my heart and hold these heavy realities up to you. May it count as prayer. Help me to know when there's water in my bucket and which fire to throw it on, but also to know when to wait because I am on empty. Help me to trust that you will give me what I am to give away and to not feel like I must carry water for everyone else. I guess what I'm saying, Lord, is please show us some mercy and help us to show this same mercy to ourselves and others. Amen.
Lord, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. Do this in remembrance of me. We are wrapped up in a history and a current culture that calls to be remembered, to be relevant. And yet, even as we're told that this life is but a vapor in the wind, it is but fleeting, we are told that God remembers us. And even in that memory care, Jesus takes it another step and remembers those who are there and not there. Jesus reminds the people that he is with that he does not come for form nor fashion, but comes for those who have been forgotten, comes for those whose memories were to be wiped away. At this table, Jesus calls for us to remember multiple things. Remember that you are cared for. Remember that you are loved. And remember also that your neighbor is loved. And not all neighbors are welcome in places. So when we come to this table, Jesus calls us to remember who is here and who is not and how we care for those. So at this table, we lift up bread and we lift up cup. We say on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, broke it and gave thanks. So this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And sometimes memory is funny, and sometimes remembering things is really hard, so the disciples probably were just continuing conversation, but lifts up the cup, gives thanks, and said that this is my blood poured out for you, that I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until I drink it anew with you, with God. We are called to remember y'all. So let us hear the prayer of our elder over the communion table. We come to this table, God of all creation, to celebrate the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, our Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ is our life. In Christ is our hope. In Christ is our strength. Here at this table, we affirm our faith in and celebrate our relationship with the bright morning star, Jesus Christ. In eating this bread, we remember that Christ came in human flesh to be God with us. In drinking this cup, we proclaim that the love that was poured out for us in Christ's death emerged triumphant. Bless us as we partake that we might grow in your spirit. Amen. So we invite everyone to this table. Come and remember who you are, whose you are, and be inspired to serve from being served. Come forward if you are comfortable. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. to the end of yourself do you thirst for a drink from the well Jesus is calling oh come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. 
Jesus is calling. Oh, 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 come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus christ getting Hudson ready to uh, bring forward the light of Christ this morning and I asked him Hudson do you remember why we do this and he looked up at me and said because God loves us I said yeah that's right so that we can show God's love to everybody so that we can look in your eyes and say I see the love of God in you and you can look in their eyes and tell them I see the love of God in you the invitation this morning is to become a part of something bigger than ourselves. Become a part of this love of God that is constantly swirling all around us. <clears throat> Finding our true self in Christ means that we claim a purpose and a place within the body of Christ. We remember Christ. Here. The invitation is to become part of the body, to become part of that love that is spilling out and over into the universe, into the world. Like Peter, when Jesus asks him, who do you say that I am? We proclaim that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. We offer ourselves and our gifts up for the common good. So that that same love that is carried down this aisle every Sunday morning can be carried into the world out from here. That is what we are a part of. That is the invitation to become something bigger than ourselves. To remember the body where we are. Through prayer, service, presence, generosity, and study, we commit to a faithful journey of continued growth. This is what we're about here. And if you would choose that today, if you would choose to become a part of something bigger than just yourself, a part of the love of God that is in this world already, then come forward as we stand and sing our last song. A thousand times I've failed 
Still your mercy remains Should I stumble again I'm caught in your grace Everlasting Your light will shine When all else fades Never ending Your glory goes beyond all things Your will above all purpose remains the art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all things my heart and my soul I give you control, consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Your will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond. heart and my soul I give you control consume me from the inside out Lord let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out everlasting your light will shine when all a great morning we're so thankful you have joined us today may God continue to bless us as we fellowship this morning we're not done yet we've got Bible classes for all ages starting right now coffee and breakfast in the fellowship area beautiful spread out there if you haven't seen it yet we got coffee and conversation with Pastor Amy oh nope we're not doing that now sorry no we have today just today only a special guest speaker in the gym her name is Elsie Miller and um, she has just a beautiful story of faith to share with us. So today, there is no coffee and conversations or adult Sunday school, but this combined um, celebration in the gym. So join us, get some food and coffee. Also, offices are closed tomorrow for the holiday. Happy anniversary to Hal and Cindy Gill. And if you can, stick around for the hot dog luncheon and music. And next Sunday, last thing, one service, a combined service with our scholarship French, uh, not French fry, fish fry, and luncheon. Okay. I had one job, one job. <laughs> but above all, we have a God who loves us and fills our lives with grace, mercy, and blessing. And we have a beautiful guest speaker today. Can't wait for that. Be encouraged, be great, be blessed. And we will see you again next week, church. And all the church said, amen. My heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Everlasting, your light will shine when no Cries out from the inside out, Lord. 
Breathe. 